Fans of a Horus Heresy and well-assembled subterranean super-heavy transport vehicles, thank you very much for joining me for an update video where I'm going to show you what I've been doing on the super-heavy kit. I'm currently working on from Fordwell, and this is part of my Mechanicum army. And for those of you who follow me with my uh, very infrequent posting videos at the moment, um, you will remember that a few months ago, maybe many months ago now, I did an unboxing of this fella, the Mechanicum Ordinatus Acteus. Acteus, yeah, I think that's right, Acteus. Um, super heavy Imperial Transporter. So this is a, a big old Fordwell full resin kit. It's a very fascinating model as well, and it comes as all modern Forge World kits do with these uh, CAD renders of uh, how to assemble the model. Uh, and it runs through the whole thing from start to finish. Now, as is often the case with Forge World and instructions, one has to view the included literature as a guide to assembly as opposed to a hard and fast this is a way to put it together. And there's good reasons for that. There's a couple of things I'm going to talk to you in this kit. So the first thing is my general approach to building this model. And then I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm doing in terms of working on it and a few of the challenges that I've encountered. That's what we're going to do. Beginning at the start, let's just talk about the sequence of construction. So what this, uh, what the instructions give us is a series of build steps to assemble the carrier first uh, and then working your way through all the various stages of that before then assembling um, the mole itself or the uh, Acteus in the final step. So, well, I'm slightly adapting this build procedure. So what I'm doing is I'm going to assemble the actual mole fully first. Well, I'm going to assemble the mole fully before I fully assemble um, the, uh, let's say the launch ramp. So this section here, and I'll finish with the track units last like these are. And the reason for that is this thing is going to sit on this ramp which raises and lowers and I want to, make, to get a good alignment and make sure everything's working right. I want this build to test on this uh, as I was putting that together. So that's kind of like how I'm modifying this assembly process uh, to do that. So uh, let's set those instructions <laughs> build guide to one side for a moment. And I'll just show you what I've been doing on the actual body of the model itself. So this is quite interesting. So there's two large um, main sections which go together like that. This is up and this is the underside. So this is going to be where it mounts on the rail. You can see a few bits of filling where I've been restoring the shape from, a, let's just say, the molding process. So there's that bit. There's this, which is like the rear. Uh, part of it, which has these two bits here, which locate into these grooves, like so. Top liner looks like that, so it's a, like a bit of a cylinder. You know, you could use it if we take a dusty brush, it could uh, make a neat little uh, pot holder or a pen holder type thing. I mean, you can't quite see it, it's out of shot, but I'm sure you understand the principle of what I'm thinking. Probably a little bit expensive given that this kit retails for £341 now in the UK. So that's like that. There's, there's a bit of filling to do on this, nothing too substantial. Then you've got the, uh, the first segment of the drill, or the rear, depending if you count it from the body or the tip of the drill backwards. But uh, we've got this drill ring now. This is two parts. You can see it's hemispherical, um, each one. Uh, sorry, a half, not really a hemisphere, that's the wrong way of putting it. Which left a join on each section there and there. So I've stuck this together, uh, just super glued it together. Had some nice locator pegs, so that was all very straightforward. And then I put this milliput filler uh, there and there. Part of this is due to restoring the shape from mould, from where the mould was. Part of it is to get rid of the seam, which isn't supposed to be there. I think it's supposed to look like this, so seamless. This is ready to now sand down. Got that section of the collar. Now, what then happens is we've got this bit here, which drops in the top there. Now, I'm going to see how well we can actually sort of put this together on the ground. 
What we've then got is we've got the uh, the lemon juicer section, which is this bit, uh, beautifully detailed, really nice. Uh, it's a little bit of filling I've done there. This was restoring shape where it was lost due to uh, the way the mold was and it was a bit slipped. So that's this bit. Then we've got an internal bulkhead that has a nice locating notch. Uh, so you get it the right way around. Well, it's more like, there's no real wrong way around to put that, but you do get a nice affirmative fit like so. And then the core drill, uh, which is then going to run all the way through, simple locates like so. Uh, and then this collar goes on like that. And then just to remove this for a brief moment, that bit there is going to go like that. And then there's a plug that attaches on the end of this. I've not got the plug to hand for this video today, but that just sticks on the end and it holds it together. Now, there's a couple of things I've noticed here. Firstly, the plug leaves a little bit of forward and backward play here. So I will be packing it out somewhere, maybe shortening the peg to get a, a firm fit. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, there's a little bit of lateral movement. And that's because the aperture for the peg is a little bit too wide. So I'm currently thinking of a way to I don't know, maybe wrap some sort of tape around this peg in a couple of locations, so here and here, those two locations, uh, to tighten up that fit. Same there. Uh, I'm not deciding on how to do that yet. Clearly any tape solution needs to be something that's going to last a long time because it will all be sealed up. Now maybe one of you guys or girls might have an idea. If so, please do share it in the comments. That then all is going to sit there. And then that is the main body of the uh, Acteus. So where, what should we do with this now? Well, if we take our trusty packet Milliput and put that there, and let's see if we can just stick that under the nose. There you go. That's not bad, is it? Now I can uh, appreciate it in the background as we move on to the next bits. Now, talking about the next bit, um, let me talk about the main hull. This is quite interesting. So, main hull is these two segments, or the chassis as they call it, chassis front and chassis rear, which stick together. Now, I've stuck these together. I was working on this yesterday evening, and it forms into this continuous single piece. This trench is really important uh, with the main moving feature of this model, and I'll come to that in a second. In terms of the fit on this, now, it was slightly wonky, so this bit was slightly inclined off to, I think that side, if I remember rightly. Yeah, that side, so it's slightly wonky, and you want this trench as straight as you can get it. So what I did is I heated up these two sections here in some hot water, and then pressed them hard together, and, and basically exerted force on this side of the part um, to really push it in uh, and get that lined up. And that seems to have worked and done the trick, and then, uh, I put some pins in it, so probably there's, th there's three steel pins, one here, one here, and one here, all about that length that are bracing it. And I super glued that together. That's now rock solid. The reason I pinned it, well, I suppose you could have just stuck it, but given it's going to support the weight of... You've got front and track units, so um, there's no sort of like single piece running underneath it. To support it so you know and you're gonna have all the weight of this great thing on top of it so why not reinforce uh, you only build these things once so do a proper job i think so that then gives us the uh, completed chassis or the body of it there's a lot more bits to go on here yeah and then from that we've got this thing here that's going to drop into there there you go focus is with us today i've got to admit the focus on this uh, new smartphone camera is absolutely fantastic. Uh, there we go. And then that uh, section there, that almost collar holds the whole thing in place. And then that rotates. And then that will work in conjunction with the mold tray or the mounting tray uh, to roll across it. It doesn't quite do it yet, first because it's not fully assembled, secondly because I've not really spent time um, smoothing everything down so it moves uh, nice and easily. You can see the notches where the cog fits in, so that's going to go back and forth like that. So that's all good, uh, very 
snug fit on that. I've not got such a snug fit is on the next two bits, which are these two here. Um, and these are going to go, so you've got a set of round and semicircular locator pegs. And one is going to go either side of that, and that's going to be kind of like the rail that mounts the carrying tray for the mole. And if I just show you the instructions, we can see there's those two there. And important point here is you put the platform elevation arm in first, and then they stick on top. If you forget to put your platform elevation arm in, you're stuffed because you can't insert it after those are in position. Now, we'll come back to the platform elevation arm in a moment. So I just want to show you the issue I've got here. You would have thought, right, very simple. We locate the front peg there, and then these click into place. Unfortunately, they don't, and there's a good reason for this. And the reason for this is the part is incorrectly sized. Um, so it's uh, it's actually a little bit. This is a little bit too long. The in terms of the positioning of the the locator pins for the chassis. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I've had a look at the instructions, and the way this is supposed to go is it's supposed to align flush at the back here. So I'm going to basically cut down the locating pins and just simply locate it through. I don't think it matters if it's a bit proud at this end. I will have to see though. Um, if it is, I'm going to have to play around a bit to get it to fit. But that was it's a... not the first time I've seen problems with forge all kits where um, the parts have not been cast to the correct size. Uh, it happens all the time. Uh, and there you can see quite evidently. So here, this is lined flush at the rear. And we can see how out of position the forward peg is and the middle peg. Unfortunately, both of these rails is suffering from the same malady. Again, flush alignment at the rear. And we follow it through and we can see that the front two pegs do not line up. So rather than enlarge the holes in the chassis, I'm going to cut the pegs down. That'll be easier. So it'll be a bit long at the front. I don't think that will matter though. If it does, my next plan is then to cut a chamfer down on this, basically so this can be a little bit further recessed. There's not a lot to play with there, as you can see. We've only got maybe a millimeter or three quarters of a millimeter to play with there at the most. So it could be a bit tight that, so I'll have to see how it goes. But that's those two, so yeah, uh, outsized parts. Um, I'm going to try fixing it rather than requesting replacement parts this time. So, I mean, apart from the sizing issue, they do fit. And I have got, as I've just described to you there, a relatively straightforward solution to fix it issue. So then we've got, um, so back to him. Right, we don't need that, so we'll remove that. Now, I'll talk about the main lift arm. So that is this piece here. Now, that sits in the trench. And well, actually, we do want that, uh, that bit back, so uh, I was wrong. There you go, it's back. That sits in there. And then on the underside, we've got a notch here for the arm. And then it's kind of going to do something along these lines. I don't, don't quite get it yet, but that gets held in place, the underside of that. And then it's going to end up there. Like that. Uh, in essence, it's a launching position. Um, you can kind of imagine it uh, for the main mole. So because of that, the whole weight of the model, when it's displayed and gamed with that way, is going to be supported on the main lift arm. So what do we do? Well, this being me, of course, I'm going to stick a great big pin in it. So here we've got, I think this is, is this 1.2 millimeter piano wire? It's a bit thicker. Um, it's probably closer to two millimeter piano wire. So yeah, quite a hefty thick pin there. I've drilled it out, as you can see. And then the pin just drops in there, like so. And the length of the pin 
we can see is that. So it extends almost all the way to the bottom of the lift arm. And that means, um, you know, I'll cut it off there, obviously, and stick it. But that means there's no chance that this arm, which is relatively thin for probably half a kilo or more of resin to sit on, uh, there's no chance um, that that is going to break, even if it gets uh, bumped or a small drop. Uh, you know, the sort of drop you might have when you're playing and you accidentally slip out of your hands just like onto a table. So yeah, so that's reinforcing the lift arm. And for a small amount of work and materials, I think that's something that is well worth doing. So that is a lift arm, right. So in terms of the actual build, that's kind of the main bits around the structure and the construction so far. Everything else looks pretty straightforward, mainly just detailing. Uh, the other thing is now, if you cast your mind back to when I unbox this, um, you may recall that I was griping a little bit about how these track units, which are called three, the track units, as it says, uh, which are four unique designs, are all slightly different. They had the key attached directly on here, and they didn't have a separate cast track piece, which then went onto a gap where the key was attached to make sure you didn't have any distortion around the key point, which is a common issue. And we've seen these uh, these kind of separate keys on quite a few forge wall kits recently. So for example, uh, Cell Auxilia Carnadon and Aurox Transports and others. And it's a really nice uh, design feature to uh, get rid of that ugly key attachment point. Unfortunately, no four of these didn't have it. So despite being a, a very expensive kit and for what might have cost an extra five pounds, even 10 pounds on the price and would have made people happy they didn't do it so because of that on all four of these i've had to rebuild one of the track links where the um key was attached so these are at the point where i've done the filling this is this is about a day old um, so it's not quite cured yet all needs sharpening up filing down getting into shape to make it look regular with the others a lot of work you know this is a it might look simple to have one two three, and four of these. This fourth one was probably the least bad. But when you're, you know, you're sculpting these by hand, uh, that's quite a lot of work. And there's a good few hours of work that's gone into getting those to that stage so far. So yeah, I'm going to have another gripe about the design at this point. They should have just left a track section off and then have an attachment point. There would have been one trade-off there because you can see how the track is in four different positions here. So perhaps that would have made, they could have done one of two things. They could have had the tracks all in the same position, which would have made for a less random looking model, but then the separate track pieces for the better final finish, or have the track in different locations, but the key onto the track, which is what they went with. And uh, the consequence is, well, hours and hours of extra uh, hobbying work to restore the details. That's a bit of a gripe for me. Perhaps uh, some people will prefer the tracks in more random positions. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what the right answer is there, but I'd have probably preferred um, the easier build, particularly on something that is going to take a long time, like the Acteus. So I think that is everything I have to say on this build so far. So just to recap, we've talked about um, the build sequence and how I'm going to deviate from the instructions, the actual main mole itself, assembling the chassis and reinforcing that, um, the sizing issues with these two rails on the chassis, reinforcing the main lift arm, looking at the tray a bit, and then restoring the detail on these four track units. So that is everything I have to say today on building this. So yeah, I'll see how I go. There may be another build video in this a little bit further down the line before I get it finished. But I hope you found this interesting. It's an unusual model. I don't imagine many people have one. If you do have one, please do share your thoughts. Um, if you have built it, how did you find your build? Perhaps um, you haven't encountered any of the issues I have. And perhaps you've got some alternative and cleverer solutions to what I've come up with to the issues I have encountered. And then anyone who's got any ideas about how to improve the fit on that peg on the drill head, I'll be also interested to hear what you have to say on that. So I hope you've enjoyed this build video. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.